Fed that Colorado that did you? They've been around a long time, and they've um, one of the most uh, wonderful thing about Fed is just uh, how well supported it is institutionally. They have um, grant fundings for National Science Foundation, and it's um, it's kind of the thing that's nice about large, stable institutions that um, there's an ongoing support and update. So they've been updating a lot of their simulations uh, in their decades of existence, um, and their latest and best will be available available as HTML5 simulations. And for the simulations that relate to this con uh, this class, they will be under electricity, magnets, and circuits. And um, and there are some good ones that uh, you have seen me use, and some that you will see me use. Um, I think in recordings and whatnot. Uh, I think you have you might have seen me use this um, simulation as a way to talk about static electricity in an introductory way. This simulation is nice because you can um, kind of um, animate <laughs> the kind of a common thing that you see, you know, in regular static or everyday static electricity phenomena. You rub a balloon to a sweater or some cloth, and then you see some kind of interaction between balloon and other stuff. And the simulation is nice for um, nice for um, visualizing these things because um, so in this version right now you are basically seeing the same thing that you see in the real world and one advantage that simulation has over real world is it can show the things you can't directly see in the real world so when you show charge differences you can see oh so this balloon is attracted to the sweater because of this charge, um, positive charge attracting the negative charge. But then, hey, why is this balloon attracted to the wall then? Oh, wait. But, uh, why, why does it stick to the wall then? That's where if you show all charges, you can see the phenomenon of polarization and so all that. This is a more introductory conceptual thing. And, um, um, and this is a nice uh, thing to illustrate, uh, visualize the um, the introductory ideas in static electricity. And there are also other simulations that you have seen me use, and they are more quantitative, charges and field. It's one of my favorite simulation. Um, you have seen me, uh, in fact, there are uh, uh, lab activities that make use of this. So I think you are quite familiar with it. In fact, we had a worksheet lab uh, last week that was based on this. So, um, so, uh, so, so I, I do encourage you to play with this yourself to uh, gain kind of a sense of, um, especially the, the graphical tools that we introduce of electric field lines and uh, equipotentials. Um, this uh, tool is particularly useful in illustrating equipotentials. So, because um, you have this drawing tool. Um, and and I yeah I've also used this to talk about electric fields. That was the subject of last week's uh, the uh, last week's online worksheet lab session. So, um, so this uh, yeah so this is a good simulation. Now one thing that's lacking in this simulation is it doesn't show um, electric field lines, and there is a reason for that. Um, Electric field lines uh, tend to be, um, it's uh, one of those things that's uh, easy for us humans to draw, um, but it uh, takes more computing power to work out on a simulation like this interactively. So, so what's uh, demonstrated here is what's called um, vector field as in you have uh, basically a lattice grid of your 2D plane and each one of these lattice points you are illustrating what the electric field would be like. So right now I have it to show direction only, or if I turned it off, it can illustrate direction and magnitude in uh, some fashion. Um, so this kind of thing, it's uh, really easy for computers to do because really all they need is whatever many number of lattice points, not that many, maybe a little bit over a hundred points and just do calculation of the vector quantity at these points and just 
display graphically. It's super easy. Um, it's harder for us humans to draw those hundreds of odd arrows. Um, with the electric field lines, the thing that's challenging, it's, it's a continuous line. And when we are drawing it, us as human beings with hands, it's easy for us to do, draw those continuous lines. But um, for the program to calculate out what the reasonable visual way those lines should be, it, it involves decision making. And the kind of decision making, it's one of those things that um, that we do well, but computers, at least until artif real, true artificial intelligence becomes a real thing, it, it's something that you know programmers really need to think through and think through what the uh, acceptable heuristic will be. And so, uh, as part of last week's lab, we did find some uh, some simulations that do simulate electric. Uh, field lines. So I will show you those and uh, point out some of the limitations that you see in the simulation that you don't see here. Like here, I have a great degree of freedom in how I set up these um, electric uh, uh, electric charges. And you will see that um, in the sim versions of simulations that simulate electric field lines that you don't have that. They don't let you um, uh, they they don't give you as much degree of freedom, and, and yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Even with the equipotential lines, I'm pretty sure they settled with these um, manually clicked on points because for these lines to update automatically as I move the charges, that would be another programming kind of difficult task. But even then, equipotential lines are easier than electric field lines, because at least with the potentials, there isn't a judgment call. There isn't a decision-making process that need to be involved. But anyways, so with the caveat, this is one of my favorite simulations, and uh, you've seen me use it. Now, as you look at the rest of the simulations, um, you might find there isn't that many uh, static electricity simulation, like, okay, there's this, uh, silly simulation about um, the most common electric static electric uh, phenomena that you might have experienced but uh, I, I don't know what this is meant to teach <laughs> it doesn't seem like a college level thing but whatever um, oh, I, I guess is it the thing about uh, you need a high enough voltage thing? I don't know silly um and i guess there's this more quantitative coulomb's law simulation and this could actually be useful this is one of those things that i give a bit of um a short shrift um the discussion about uh, coulomb's law the inverse uh, square law um i think most people can kind of work this out it um I, I kind of go through Coulomb's law quickly so that I can spend more time with Gauss's law, as you have seen last week, and then as you will see later with Ampere's law and Faraday's law. Um, but to the extent that these visualizations help you as you are thinking through Coulomb's law, for example, the fact that these two forces are equal in magnitude, even when the charges are not equal in magnitude, this all ties to Newton's third law. and Oh, I don't think I have seen the atomic scale one. Um, I, okay, I guess there's no difference. Anyways, um, but so this simulation is there. Uh, if this helps you kind of dispel some of the misconceptions, um, that, that's great. <laughs> um, you haven't seen me use it, and I guess you still want. Um, and that's all the um, electrostatics simulations and i think i do want to spend a little bit more time with this capacitor lab because that relates to chapter 8 content and i think i want to kind of play with it a little bit um let me show before i do that let me show you how to bring up some of the simulations that are hidden by default and this has to do with the filter setting so uh, i believe it's the filter that said here yes so by default, so you know, if you click on uh, this link here, by default, it'll drop you down into this where it's already been filtered for HTML5 simulations. And 
there's a reason for that. HTML5 is really the best. Uh, it 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 um it it exemplifies the best and the latest of the web. Um, HTML5 simulations are great because they work on computers. They work on almost all the mobile devices that use a modern browser. It's cross-platform. It it's great. It um it, 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 it's power efficient and all that. Um, now, that has been around for uh, decades, at least 20 years or so. And HTML5 was, wasn't around there for long, that long. So some of their legacy simulations, they are not made in HTML5. And there are some simulations uh, here that, um, that use Flash that um, frankly takes a lot of work to um, uh, in fact I think they got rid of all the flash simulations here uh, I think yeah <laughs> um, so so flash is uh, something that um, that that uh, if it ever comes up for this class, I will show you a workaround on how to run flash simulations. But I think a lot of the simulations that, yeah, I don't see any flash simulations here. So any that existed before for at physics 4B level, they've already um, replaced. So, um, so, so if you simply disable the HTML5 filter, you will see all the simulations. And a great number of the simulations that they have that are still useful and I would use from time to time are Java simulations. And um, I think the biggest uh, restriction with the Java simulation is that they won't run on mobile devices. Um, so they've been making these browser compatible versions available. And they usually mean a browser compatible on um, on computers, on PCs and Mac and Linux. Um, and you can also download it onto your computer. And uh, it, Java simulations are basically available on platforms with a Java runtime environment, which won't be mobile devices. So, so you know, disable HTML5 filter or uh, select both of these, then, um, then you, you will see all the simulations that's available on FED, which is actually quite a lot. So, you know, between HTML5, only 10, I more than double the number of simulations I can use. So of these, I think the one that I was missing and that was the reason I was looking for them um, was the one, yeah, uh, these two simulations that illustrate electric fields. Um, I forget what electric field of dreams really simulated. Let me see what it does. Um, I have to run it to remind myself what it does. If it doesn't do anything interesting, I might not do it. So, okay, it's showing electric field lines. All right, that's fun. Um, Oh, I see. It, uh, um, so here you can set up your charges so that they all kind of interact with each other, I think. And I can, can I change their properties? Ah, there it is. Um, yeah, so I can, I think when I change property, that only changes the property of the thing that I'm adding. Yeah. Okay, so if I add a positive charge, then, um, yeah, so, you know, it's fun. And I think this positive charge will start to, or let me just add a super large positive charge. Then I think that will attract basically everything except for one charge that's positive. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I can also apply an external field. Yeah. How large a field can I apply? Oh yeah, and if I apply large enough field, I can break apart those charges. Yeah, that's fun. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, so I can play with it like a game, but 
Beyond that, I don't know what I would use this to. Because sometimes it's, uh, um, especially when you're trying to talk about electric fields and charges, it's uh, nice to be able to have um, kind of charges that are fixed in the background. And this one doesn't let you do that, I think. So, and besides, these are not labeled, so that's super unhelpful. Um, so, but there's that. <laughs> you can't play with it. I guess one thing maybe that I can demonstrate that's not so um, um, trivial is I can do this. I can set up the external field and after, with the simulation paused, I can um, a few different charges. Let's say a positive charge of mass one. Let me add that, put that in this corner here, and let me add another um, positive charge of mass 5. So same charge, but um, greater mass. Okay, you'll just have to keep track. That's your right top corner. And I can add a negative charge of a same large mass. Uh, let me put this right bottom corner. Um, and then I can add a negative charge of mass 1. Um, and put it on the left bottom corner. And you can see with the external field applied how these charges will move. Let's give it a try. <laughs> and you can see that and maybe that'll illustrate something. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they keep bouncing. So, so but that's one simulation that um, you have now seen me use and that'll probably be as much as I will use. Um, and this simulation, I remember using it before, maybe not in lectures for Physics 4B, but I've used this um, for a Physics 10 lecture. And it's, uh, I find this to be useful for demonstrating some things about electric field, what they mean and what they don't mean. So, um, for example, uh, let's see, can I, yeah, I can show fields. So, you know, as I put in these charges, you see these electric fields. And, uh, oh, let me put in a kind of a dipole field. So I have a dipole field here. Now, and can I, okay, I can't move that. Uh, so with this setup, I think it's, uh, um, I can illustrate. Let's see here. Let me. So I'm. So I think this is meant to be a game where you are trying to put this into that goal. I'm not doing that. I'm just interested in physics, not hockey. <laughs> so let me run the simulation and let me uh, just. Uh, yeah. Let me just run it once and then I'll talk about what I want to talk about. So let me reset it. Watch the path of the ball again. Let me just uh, um, be ready to sketch out that path after it finishes running through. Okay, let me see if I can. <laughs> All right, I don't quite remember it. So let me just sketch it as it's moving. I think that's going to be the easiest way. Um, how do I do this? Um, sorry, it's really hard to. Okay, so start and then okay. Okay, something like that, I think. So, <laughs> as you see that path, um, what I want you to realize and or fully appreciate is that. Electric field lines, those are lines of force. So the electric field, the direction of electric field, they indicate the direction in which net force is applied on a charge. They are not um, direction of movement because direction of movement will be direction of velocity. It's the difference between velocity and acceleration. Acceleration should be in the same direction as electric field, uh, the net field, but not the velocity. So initially when it's moving from rest, the direction of acceleration and velocity will be the same. But as it's moving, like around here, you know, the acceleration is towards the negative charge, but it already has a significant velocity going this way. So it kind of keeps going that way. 
it is drawn to the negative charge. It kind of bends this way, but um, there was an enough of a push from positive charge initially that it doesn't quite um, uh, quite remain around the negative charge. So, so that's what you see here. And um, if you want, you can set up other things. Let's see here. I can probably do this. Um, don't know how well this is going to work. I think this will be enough that uh, it'll remain bound to negative charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, or if I or if I move it this way, okay, let's do it this way. <laughs> and uh, this is also another game. It's I think uh, a lot more fun to just uh, play with it than um, than you know uh, watch someone else play. Uh, let me give this a try. Is it gonna come back? Okay, yeah, it's gonna come back. All right. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, this this is uh another simulation that does certain things that um that <laughs> sorry, just do this and then stop. All right, uh, it does certain things that some of the other available HTML5 simulations don't do. And I, I think it is, that's basically the usefulness of this simulation. It helps you um, look at the relationship between uh, kinematics, how this puck moves, and the uh, um, electric field. And, uh, and, you know, realize that the relationships, those relationships are a bit more complicated than the, just the field line. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, let me close this. And I think that's more mostly it for the simulations that um, we can look at now. Uh, there are, are, they have a greater selection of simulations for circuits. So we'll definitely look at more later with, uh, let me get HTML5 back on. They have these uh, circuit construction kits. These are pretty good for um, simulating uh, both the DC and I think they have an AC circuit. Um, they had the AC circuit somewhere. Um, oh, maybe AC circuit is the one that's only available with the Java, possibly. Um, or is it even the version you just have to download? Oh yeah, circuit construction kit ACDC. Yeah, yeah. So so that's coming later in the semester. Um, yeah, and uh, I just want you to end this uh, exploration of fat simulations with uh, this capacitor lab. I haven't actually tried it before, so I don't know what it lets you do. But so we do introduce capacitors in chapter eight. Now we don't do a lot with it for a while. Um, so, you know, in chapter 10, we could do more with the capacitors as chapter 10 talks about RC circuits, but uh, we will be deferring a good chunk of that until towards the end of the semester when we are going to deal with all the time dependent circuits all, all in one chunk in like two, three weeks. So, um, so in chapter eight, as we talk about capacitors, it'll be, um, introduction of the device that we want to <laughs> match with and uh, this drawing here basically shows you what a capacitor is um let's see here is the simulation running now does it oh uh, it might just not be showing the charge oh, oh okay it's because the there's no battery okay okay good um Does it animate anything? Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't. Electric field. All right. Um, okay, let me close the circuit. And um, yeah. 